Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread recipe. And in this one I'll be continuing with the donut theme with these delicious cream filled donuts. My last donut ring video used the no need method but in this one I'll show you how to make these using the stand mixer version. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. Your amazing financial support really helps with ever increasing equipment, ingredient and editing software costs. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. Ok, let's get on with today's recipe. And I'll start the recipe by setting away the yeast. Now it's always best to test that your yeast is alive and well before starting any bread recipe. Okay, I've warmed up the milk and to that I'll add the sugar and the egg and give it a good mix. Now it's the milk and the egg that gives these donuts their soft light texture. But if you can't have or simply don't like eggs, you can substitute it for an extra 55 grams or millilitres of milk. A quick check at the temperature and that's 36 degrees Celsius, that's around 97 Fahrenheit. And that's fine. And now I'll add the yeast. Now I'm using instant dried yeast but you can use active dried or even fresh yeast if you prefer. And if you do use fresh yeast you'll need 15 grams. Now I'll give that a good stir and make sure it's all incorporated into the liquid. Right, I'll set that aside until it activates and that usually takes around 5 to 10 minutes. And like I said in the intro, I'll be using my stand mixer for this recipe. But if you don't have one, you can follow the no knead method in my other donut ring video recipe. Right, to the mixer bowl I'll add the now active dried yeast mixture. Make sure you scrape it all out of the jug. Now add the softened butter. Next add the salt to the flour and mix it in. And now add the flour to the bowl too. Place the bowl back on the machine and add the dough hook. Now turn on the mixer on its slowest speed and mix for a few seconds until it all comes together. And it always helps the machine out to manually scrape down the sides of the bowl too. Now set your machine away on a medium speed for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. I'll set my timer away on count up mode to see exactly how long it takes, as different machines vary in their speeds. What you're looking for is the dough to completely pull away from the sides of the bowl. Now after 8.5 minutes mine is starting to clear the sides. And after almost 11 minutes mine has pulled away from the sides of the bowl and it's done. Ok, I'll clean down the dough hook and when I come back I'll show you what to do next. To start with, lightly oil a large bowl. The oil is there so the dough will release easier from the bowl after its first proof. Ok, sprinkle a little flour on your bench. Now turn out the dough from the mixer bowl onto the flour. Now sprinkle a little flour on the dough. Now form the dough into a ball. 
Now clear the flour away from the bench because you now want the dough to stick to the bench. Now stretch the outer skin of the dough by dragging it over the flour free surface as shown. Place the dough ball into the oil bowl and coat the dough ball in the oil. Once you're happy with it, cover the bowl and I like to use a shower cap for this. And these shower caps are available in the website shop if you want one. It's just another way you can support the channel guys. Now get your bowl into a nice warm draft free spot and there's no better location than your oven with just the light bulb on. Now set your timer for one hour. Once your proofing time is almost up, flour your surface as shown. Ok, time's up so I'll get it out of its warm spot. And as you can see, it's nicely risen. Turn it out onto the floured surface and knock it back. That simply means get all of the gas out of it. Form it into a ball and divide it up into 8 pieces. And if your measurements were correct at the beginning, your dough should now weigh 800 grams, that's 28 ounces. So the math is easy. Each piece should weigh 100 grams, that's 3.5 ounces each. And the best tool to use for dividing the dough is your bench scraper. Once divided, form each piece firstly into a ball. Try to emulate this rolling technique on a flour free surface. Once you get the hang of it, it becomes very easy to do. And once the ball's formed, form it into a sausage shape. Then get it onto the floured surface and do the same with all the others. When all eight are done, cover them with a dry, lightweight cloth. Now let them rest for 10 minutes. And this will make the final shaping much easier to do. Before doing the final shaping, line a large baking tray with parchment paper. Ok, time's up and it's time to do the final shaping. Now this final shaping is very easy to do. Just take one of the shapes and gently roll it until it's about 15 centimeters or 6 inches in length. Once shaped, place each one on the baking tray but leaving plenty room in between for the final rise. Once they're all done, lightly brush each one with a very thin coat of any cooking oil. This will just prevent them from drying out. Now cover them again with the lightweight dry cloth and let them proof this time for 30 minutes. And at this point I hope you don't mind if I give my three recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. All three books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And for the next few days I'll be throwing in a free baker scraper worth £3 when you purchase one, two or all three books. The offer closes midnight Thursday the 7th of July 2022 UK time. So get your free scraper now. Also we now have a shop open on eBay where we have lots of our products for sale too. So if you want to check that one out I'll leave a link in the description box below the video. Thanks for your time guys. Now back to the recipe. When there's only 10 minutes left on the final proof, fill a suitable pan with oil and you can use whatever cooking oil you have. Now I'm using vegetable oil, but rapeseed, sunflower and canola oil, any of those will do. 
now you need to get the oil temperature up to around 160 to 170 Celsius, that's 320 to 340 Fahrenheit. Right, the time's up on the final proof, and as you can see, they've risen quite nicely. Now carefully lower them one at a time into the hot oil. Just fry two or three at a time, otherwise you'll risk the oil going over the edge of the pan. Now fry these for about 90 seconds on each side. And that's all the time it takes for these delicious donuts to cook. And once the time's up, gently lift them out and onto some kitchen paper to drain off any excess oil. And just carry on until they're all done. And that's all of mine finished. What I'll do now while they're still hot is to coat each one in some caster sugar. You can use ordinary granulated sugar to do this but it does make them look a bit grainy. Caster sugar is a much better choice. Or if you want to know how to make your own caster sugar check out my Victoria sponge video. Right, I'll let those completely cool now before filling them with whipped Chantilly cream and topped off with my homemade strawberry syrup. Right guys, to save making these videos extra long, I'll be making a collection of very short videos, starting with how to make this amazing Chantilly cream and a separate short video on how to make this delicious strawberry syrup. And these two very short videos will be coming out around the same time as this donut video. But I do have plans to make lots of other handy quick videos for various filler recipes in the near future. So keep your eyes open for those. Right, back to the recipe. Make a cut straight down the middle of the donut, just over halfway through. Now add a little of that delicious strawberry syrup along the full length of it. OK, pipe some of that wonderful whipped cream right down the full length and depth of the doughnut too. And I'm using a large sawtooth nozzle by the way. That leaves a nice pattern in the cream. Finally, drizzle a little of that strawberry syrup over the top of the cream. Don't forget the strawberry syrup and the cream are on separate videos and they'll be released about 24 hours after posting this one. And that's it, one top quality but homemade cream filled donut and in my opinion much better than shop bought at a fraction of the price. Unfortunately I can't do a taste test on these as they are destined for a friend's party tonight but I will be putting one aside when I get there. There you go, another big thumbs up for this one guys. Cheap, delicious and easy to make. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You button supporters. And they are Anne Hoogstraten, Sandra Oss, Sandy George, Simon Lear, Solomon Allen, Natalie Jane DeLeo, Pete, Clint Hall, Jill Green, Peter Stewart, Matt Tomlinson, Roger G.V. Grant, Tammy Miller Designs, Eleanor Haswell, The Doctor 1225, John R., David Perez McCollum, Manju331, Anita Moffat, DW, Mike Rupp, Kato Kidd, Trevor Wood, L, Michael Knudsen and Paul Wilson. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.